Hey folks, welcome to this video. I'm Don. I'm taking a look at Richard Dawkins telling a theology student that his degree is useless. I didn't watch this video. I just saw the title of it and I said, I gotta just do this thing. And uh, I'm agnostic, just so you know. So I'm not promoting atheism. I'm not promoting theism. I'm right in the middle. I like to look at arguments and generally help people stand in them. But this one sort of piqued my curiosity. So Dawkins was generally a bit more congenial than, than Hitchens. Uh, but I don't know, maybe he's a bit acerbic. But let's see what he says. Speaking of people talking about falsehood, you have a lot to say about theology as a, as a discipline, um, if it can even be called that, the way that, the, the way that you paint it. Um, here's, here's a quote to give, to give you a taste of the kind of thing I'm talking about. You say this is utterly typical of the way theologians think, ignore what is actually being said and pretend it was all intended to be a symbol or metaphor. Um, do you think there's any legitimate form of theology? Of course. I mean, I think if you actually go to a department of theology and talk to professors of theology, you'll find they're doing wonderful things. I mean, they're translating the Dead Sea Scrolls, they're, they're um, looking at biblical history, they're, they're looking at um, a form of anthropology, really. Um, that's fine. What is not fine is having is logic chopping about the fundamental meaning of the transubstantiation or the Trinity or something of that sort. That's the kind of theology that I think is not a subject. The kind of theology that is a subject is historical scholarship, literary scholarship, that kind of thing. Well, I would say dogmatically or doctrinally, I agree with him on the Trinity and transubstantiation and those things. Yeah, I mean, he makes a point there. Okay, I just like getting these folks' perspectives and sharing them with you. Do you think, uh, would you say the same thing about uh, the kind of philosophy that deals with absolute truths? If, if a moment ago you said that perhaps there is, you, you don't think there is a basis to uh, the truth in ethics. Philosophers who try to do that, like Sam Harris, are essentially doing the same thing. They're, they're trying to find, that they're, they're, they're engaging in an area that you don't think even exists. Is that analogous well, to theology? Um, there's plenty of room to argue about what truth is in, in, in the real world, it's in, in science. Um, I think that in the case of, of, of morals, it's much harder to, to, to use the word truth. Hmm. I would prefer not to use the word truth where morals are concerned. Do you think the kind of theology that yeah. we spoke of a second ago when it comes into uh, investigating the nature of certain religious claims, um, do you think that is useful? Well, I think, as, as I said, as a form of anthropology, I mean, it, a, an anthropologist who studies what we could call the theology of a tribe of, right. of, of people in Africa or somewhere. I mean, that's anthropologically interesting, talking about what, what the people believe and how their, how their uh, cultural beliefs have developed and, mm -hmm. and what, they, what, what it means to them. That, that I think, is... And, and it, so if the, if the theologians who study the beliefs of Roman Catholics are doing it as anthropologists, I guess that's, that's a perfectly legitimate... Well, I mean, the reason I ask is, is outside of the anthropological um, investigations, the kind that you were just dismissing as, as, as useless, um, if an atheist engages with that kind of thing and, and studies theology in that manner, uh, do you not think that, a, that, a, that it can be useful in the sense that understanding those controversies can help people to, to debunk Good point. Them? Yes, yes, probably uh, can. And, and so, yeah, so Dawkins likes to engage in the philosophical discourse and the logical, which is what I do as well. And science is made to answer a certain type, or scientific inquiry is made to answer particular types of questions, theological or spiritual endeavors are outside the realm of that. And they don't necessarily have to be discordant, although many think they are, I, that then you get into the ep epistemological concerns, which we're speaking of here. But I do like Dawkins in this regard that you've got to look at each claim and see which makes the most sense depending on whatever is being claimed in the moment. So from that standpoint, I mean, I do like his approach because it's mine as well. I mean, the way that you talk about theology might put someone off trying to do that. Could be, yes, yes. Um, uh, yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's a fair point. I because I'm, I'm sure you've come across the criticism when you're talking to, to, a, to a religious scholar and you're arguing about, um, and, and you say, you know, why would God um, 
send himself to be tortured? Couldn't he think of a better way? And they're there thinking, but there, there's so much literature on this. Like, how can you say that when you, when you haven't engaged with the theological literature? And then you say, well, you know, theology is a bit useless. It's like, if you'd have engaged with theological literature, then perhaps they would give you the time of day and say, well, at least you've, you've done the reading and uh, are making a yeah, point but, based on... Well, okay. I agree with what he just said there, too. I absolutely agree with that, that it helps to be well-versed in other fields. And Dawkins does. He does know a lot of the literature. Hitchens does know a lot of the uh, literature, for example. And they're the two two of the big names. That, and I've reviewed and reacted to quite a bit of the stuff on the channel here that it, you need to understand it. And that is absolutely right. And so when people th on the theological spectrum don't understand the science behind things or what the rationale is behind certain things there, or even textual criticism. What are the issues with transmission and translation of the text and such? And people just proclaim to know the truth in these broad brush statements and do not understand what the other side is saying, then there's no point to even talking with folks like that because you can't have a rational discussion with them. It's really just a one-sided onslaught. But so I like the questions the, the younger guy in this thing is asking and the perspective that he's bringing. Not that they're necessarily his, they may be, but I like the perspective that he just presented. But I mean, the, you, why would I bother to, 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 to read Christian theology any, any more than Australian Aboriginal theology? Or, 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 or I suppose the same reason that you would talk about Christian theology more than you talk about yeah. uh, the, the alternative because yes, true. it's it's what you're doing it's what you're engaging no, with. I've got better things to do. I I, I do I, I do science. I see. Well, I don't know about that. He does spend a lot of time uh, debating theologians and debunking theology. So I wouldn't. I mean, here that was to me a bit disingenuous. He does do quote does do quote unquote science, but I mean it's a fair point that he makes too. And he's made this before, as as Hitchens, you know, when, when people say, why don't you study or haven't you studied belief in God or what have you? And he says, well, by you generally mean your version of God. Why do you think that I should get to know Jesus, for example, and not someone else's God? You always mean sort of like geographically where you were born. That's the God that you're likely to worship if you worship a God. And I mean, that's a bit specious. Um, and tendentious. So um, it's a fair point. And, you know, and I can understand from Dawkins or anybody's standpoint that has is disinterested in this would be my view, for example, of like women's studies, you know, gender studies in college. I'm, I'm more pragmatic. You know, the only thing you can do with that line of work, generally speaking, other than for your own edification, for example, is to go on and get a graduate degree and then teach courses to people who must re recycle this as well. And it's not quite a pyramid scheme, but or, or a uh, sort of like a Ponzi thing where you need more people underneath you to keep fueling it. Otherwise, the departments die out. But to me, it's not practical. And not everything has to be practical. But from Dawkins' perspective, you know, studying theology to him is just a waste of time because it's not real to him. It doesn't have a practical benefit. And that is sort of an indicia of the scientific mind and, you know, what you can see, what you can experiment with, what's in front of you, what you could duplicate, replicate is practical. And that's science. And so the scientific mind tends to be less enamored of ideas that are may even evoke more emotion or things that might sort of transcend or transcendent from the physical or when you get into the metaphysical and so on. And I get it. I mean, I understand that. We all have our own proclivities and desires. But his point was, the younger man's point was well taken, that if you're going to be debunking or endeavoring to debunk what the other side or another side is saying, you need to know what that is. You can't just say, well, my side makes more sense, even though I don't know yours. And Dawkins does have a pre He is well-versed. I mean, he's being... A bit tongue in cheek here. I didn't see this whole interview, but, but you know, I like being exposed to nuances of thought as well as broad brush and just see where they stand. And both of the folks here, it was a good discussion. I mean, that's this is the type of discussion I like to see, not where one's beating the other over the head. There was a respect and an understanding. And even Dawkins himself said he didn't just say, "Oh, 
everything in theology is horrible, throw it out, get rid of the people studying, you know, the biblical scholars and such. He said, here's a, a, a proper application in his mind. Anthropologically, you could study things, you could translate the Dead Sea Scrolls, see what that culture is about, and culture is anthropology, and all that. So, all right, folks, I hope you enjoyed that. Please subscribe to the channel. I'll be bringing more stuff to you as the channel grows and takes on a little bit of a different flavor and shape, as they always do when you start somewhere and you continue to grow it. it takes on some uh, new shapes. So. There you go. Have a great day. See you on another video, folks. Thanks for playing along.